uh, arts methods grew out of um, a desire to kind of match methods to a certain extent to be able to provide for our arts postgraduates um, a similar level of cutting edge cohort training um, in, in their in methodolo methodology but also to, to uh, the desire to think about how we in arts scholarship um, conceptualize uh, debate discuss and engage with the idea of methodology. Um, certainly it seems to me in my experience of working um, in, in this area now for some time that, that if you're a, a social scientist um, and if you're a scientist of any description really but if you're in other disciplines outside of the arts you're much more comfortable with the idea of methodology. It's not to say that in the arts we don't use methodology but we don't really discuss it as much um, which is clearly sort of mildly problematic um, and what it seemed to me was that there are some great uh, innovative scholars in this institution and having them start to think about how they might teach what they do uh, is one way of ensuring that we create a very interesting intellectual conversation about the nature of disciplinarity, the nature of methodolog methodology in the arts, the uh, nature of methodological kind of innovation. PGI experience is, is, is one thing, and let, let's talk about that. I think that part of the issues of PGI life, uh, postgraduate life, is in the arts and humanities has been to a very recent past, until a very recent past, has been um, that students felt they were doing the masterpiece by themselves, and that there, there's a sense of the lone scholar. Now, I, I think that's... Um, that was never entirely true, but it it became a little. It can become quite crippling to 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 a student. It can become a, a really uh, quite a daunting task. You know, you're alone in front of the PhD, as yet unwritten, and that creates a sense of isolation and uh, the the kind of. Um, Cultural isolation that perhaps in the sci hard sciences, where, where students are working in a lab and working on a sequence of a project which is much bigger than their project, don't necessarily have. I mean, they may have it, but they don't have it necessarily. So, arts methods is, in, in a way, a way of bringing back to the student, students to the reality. And the reality is that a researcher is, wittingly or not, part of a broader intellectual context made of exchanges. Making those exchanges visible, making them lively, making them vibrant, is a way of breaking the isolation issue. Um, it's a way of engaging forcefully uh, with the research project and developing the students' awareness of methodological perspectives. Well, I think in terms of the individual postgraduate researcher, um, this is an unparalleled opportunity to have conversations with scholars from all manner of different disciplines, to have peer networks, to have pastoral peer networks, to talk to people really what it's about to do a PhD. When I did my PhD I knew about six people doing a PhD uh, and I didn't really get trained in nearly anything. Um, now we have a, a great sort of set of um, groups of, of scholars talking to one another and that can only be good. Um, also it enables kind of a wider kind of intellectual um, network to be, to be get accessed. What can students expect from the workshop? Well, I think they can expect to participate. And I think that's one of the, the key, the first point. So it's not a passive. Um, format and even online I don't believe it's a passive format because uh, there is a strong emphasis on creating peer-to-peer -peer engagement so I really think that the first thing that students should expect is that they should have to do some work to actually really engage that's the first point the second thing is that they're going to engage with people who are passionate about their subject who have a great deal of expertise and a great deal of methodological expertise that they want to convey and that methodological expertise is something that traditionally in the arts uh, has been buried somewhat in perhaps a, a narrative or, or perhaps a more complex um, literature engagement or historiographical engagement from my own discipline. So making the, the methodology come to the front of, the, of that particular debate is a good way of unpacking the fundamental issues, you know, the, really, the core issues. So, the ethics of research as well. So going down to the bottom of the, of the questions, you know, as opposed to, to perhaps getting a little bit uh, dizzy with, 
with controversies and debates, we're, we're actually trying to get to where things matter. The kind of remit for what we do is that it's got to be kind of practical. Uh, even with the more abstruse sessions on you know, Adorno or Deleuze or, um, or Bourdieu, uh, the, the, the purpose is for us to be able to communicate what it is to use these theorists, what it is to conceptualise your own work in relation to theirs. Um, so I would say that most every one of our workshops has that kind of element. They're meant to be enabling in that way. I mean, I think the, in some ways the most um, that you can hope for, the desirable outcome, if you like, is that people go away thinking a little bit more reflexively about their own work um, and, and maybe come away with one or two practical things that they can implement um, uh, whereby they think a bit more about um, the objectives behind undertaking research, whether that's something um, that they can translate into a narrative um, uh, for all different audiences that demonstrates why they're doing it, what they think the impacts are going to be, um, and, and how they understand the processes of, 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 of undertaking research. We need to have the conversation, and particularly our postgraduate students need to be able to have the conversation about what they do, um, particularly if we're going to take these, these, uh, these conversations outside of the university, if we're going to go and talk to people outside of the university, in institutions, organisations, schools, government, if you're going to be able to do that you need to have a very much more kind of flexible sense of what it is that you do as a researcher. Um, and to be self-conscious in that way, to be self-aware in that way, um, is is you know one of the tricks you learn as a PhD student, it's one of the things you learn as a scholar and sometimes you know it takes you years to get there. Essentially, you know, the, the, there's good research and there's bad research, and bad research is poor in methodological terms, not in uh, not necessarily because the author is intellectually weak, but because methodologically it's flawed. So I think engaging with those these issues and with all the variations that that entails, you know, I think is what postgraduates will be able to do better. I think they already do it and I don't estimate what they currently do and in departments they still have research seminars, conferences, all sorts of events which are not part of arts methods which are essential to their training. Arts method is adding something, it's just doing a little bit more in the methodological dimension. That's really, I think we've got to, we've got to stress this very strongly which is that arts method doesn't replace everything, it adds value to everything else that we do and which other institutions do as well, you know, uh, postgraduate seminars, etc.